Can you believe it? This is our last virtual assembly. You guys were here for the very first one, and now you're here for the very last one. This is a bookend assembly. It is. All right. All right, so while we're waiting for everybody to get here, we're going to play a game of name that instrument. Okay, here I go. Dr. First G. one. What was that? That was too easy. Oh, okay. All right, here's the next instrument. Okay. This one. This one's a terrible uh, sound. This one's annoying. Fine. Song oh, the song. Okay, here's right. the next one. I come closer to the microphone. Okay. Right, next. Next one. Here we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. You might remember these from your first grade teachers. I need to watch them. Missing out there. I just sweet. Okay, here's this one. Guess this instrument. Did you look at that right on the microphone? <laughs> I think I did. That was loud. <laughs> All right, and for our final instrument. Science of Sound Assembly for Sitting Bowl 3 through 8. Take one. Hey, good Hello. morning, boys and girls. How are you? So, welcome to our last assembly the very last one. of this school year. I am Mrs. Gillette. I'm Dr. Gillette. And we are so happy that you're with us. So, today we're going to be investigating the amazing the interesting, the beautiful, and the sometimes ear-piercing science of sound. Okay, our very first assembly, we invited a genie to help us with this assembly. Well, we've invited the genie back, but this time, this genie won't be in a gold bottle. It'll be in the pipe. Okay, so genie, come out and sing for us for this assembly. I don't hear the genie. I think you have to wake him up. Okay, we gotta wake up the genie. Gonna wake up the genie with a little bit of fire. Genie, wake up! Wake up, genie! Hello, genie! How long do you, do you think it takes to I wake don't up think this genie? I don't think you warm yet. Keep going? Yep. Keep going? Warm up the genie. Come on, genie! Come on, genie! Think, think it's good? Alright. Hey. Genie, sing for me! Hey! All right, don't you interrupt it. That's loud. Yeah, Genie. Oh, what's your, come on, Genie. Come on, okay. All right, let's pour the sound out. Let's pour it back in. Hey, Genie singing. Okay, that's enough, Genie. All right, we'll go over why that worked a little later in the assembly. So, like we said in the first assembly, there really was not a Genie in the pipe. The sound you hear is the hot air rushing and rising and rushing through that pipe but we'll get into the science of that later in the assembly. For now, remember that sound is the, is the focus of our science for today's assembly. All right, so let's first start with the basic definition of sound. So sound is a vibration that travels through a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and can be heard when it reaches a person or an animal's ear. So when I think of a vibration, I think of something moving back and forth very, very quickly. So let's try feeling a vibration. Take your fingers and put them on your throat. And then hum or talk. La, and the la, la, lower, la, la, la. I've noticed, ah, oh. the lower you talk, uh, the more vibrations uh, you feel. So try uh, different uh, notes. Oh, I do feel a difference. Yeah. So do you ever wonder how that sound gets from the object, say I hear it coming from Dr. Gillette, how does it get to my ear? 
Yeah. Well, sound travels in waves. Okay, okay, so wait, this kind of a wave? Nope, not nope. that kind of a wave. Alright, what okay, watch it. This kind of wave. Ready? He's been practicing. All week. That kind of wave? No. Uh -huh. Not that kind of wave. Okay, but we can model the wave with the spring. So we are going to go to our fancy schmancy overhead camera. Here we are. Hello, everybody. All right. So here is our spring. And I can model a wave for you using the spring. In fact, I'm going to change my view a little bit. So here are two diagrams of waves. The first one really shows the amplitude, which is the height of the wave. And when we're talking the height of the wave, that is the volume of the sound. So the higher the wave, or the higher the amplitude, the higher the volume of the sound. Okay, wait, so I, I it's taken me all year to figure this out, but okay. so you're saying if the wave has an amplitude like that, that might be low in volume or it might be quiet, but okay. if we it goes like like that, mm -hmm. that's really high. It's higher, yes. Or it should go like this. Either one. Yeah. So the, oh, I, I never knew that. Okay. Okay. I learned something. See, even Dr. Roulette learned something from our assemblies. All right, now when I do a wave, so that's one wave, but then when I speed it up, I have multiple waves. And we call that the frequency. So the more waves, the faster the frequency, and the faster the frequency, the higher the note. So if I'm just doing waves like this, it would be a lower pitch or a lower note. But if I do them very fast, if I'm moving this spring back and forth quickly, it's a higher frequency and therefore a higher pitch. So that notes. really fast moving wave, that was, that's what really hurts your ears? Not necessarily, it's just higher. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, if, if it hurts your ears, it just means it's higher. Yeah, and that makes really sense. It really depends on what you're, okay. what you're used to hearing, too. So, okay, so that was basics of frequency and amplitude. Okay, so we can use springs to make and change sound as well. There's a really cool toy called a space phone. It sounds like a ray gun from old science fiction movies. Ready? That's in the bat noise. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are no longer made. Such a bummer. But did we let that stop us from having this really cool toy? No way. Nope. Okay. So I did some research online and found out that if I take two plastic cups and this spring, I can make my own space foam. So I took a push pin and poked a hole in the bottom of my cup and then took the spring and fed it through. So if you look really closely, you can see that little piece of metal. That's the end of the spring. And that's holding the spring into my cup. So the bottom of the cup, as <laughs> it's falling, acts as a diaphragm. So you have a diaphragm here that separates your abdomen from your lungs, and it helps push the air out of your lungs. Well, this diaphragm helps push the sound out of the cup. So Dr. Gillette's going to step off camera and over towards our microphone. And so I would be able, to, will be able to flick the spring to make this really cool laser gun sound. Here we go. Flick it, the more it hurts, but yeah. also the louder the sound. And you now, can see it moving on the spring. This wave is a different kind of wave. The first one I showed you was a longitudinal wave, and this is, no, that was a transverse. This is a longitudinal, but it's also called a compression wave. So the transverse wave is the one you could really see move up and down, and this is a longitudinal wave because it moves along the spring. So if you were to think about it, the compression pushes the parts of the spring together and then back out, together, back out, and that travels all the way down. All right, but we found out last week while we were doing this, you discover new things in science all the time. If we tap the spring on the table, 
it's the best sound. You ready? Yeah. So much. Yeah. All right. So then, just to stop the noise, I can touch it. But then we can also make a cool echo sound. The science of sound. Get that metallic -y. I know. Did it come out? Yeah. I can exactly. never tell because I'm over here. Uh, this reminds me of those old uh, cup phones you could make out of string and. and oh like, yeah, the tin it, can yeah. phones. Yeah. Which you could also make with cups. Okay, so that is just a really super cool kind of sound that you can make. Okay, nice. thunder tubes. This one's fun. So I bought this originally so I wouldn't have to talk to grandma on the phone. I'll tell you that story later. But uh, we have, have these big cups, has a diaphragm here and it has a spring here. Now if I hold it right here and I flick the spring, the spring should vibrate the diaphragm sending out sound. So let's listen. If I shake it, I can keep the sound going. That sounds like thunder. So where's this? Is the sounds traveling out of out of the cup? So yeah. Through the air? Yeah, through the air. Okay. So here we have the same kind of thing, smaller, same have same diaphragm, same spring. So if I flick it, now listen. It sounds similar, but just not as deep. Yeah, but why is it different? Probably the size of the tube, I imagine. Is it that yeah, one? it looks like it's the same material. Diaphragm looks a little different, but definitely the size of the two. So if we compare these two, can I compare? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I hit mine, shake it. It's a really deep, the deep, the yeah. deep rumble. Yes. It almost sounds tinny. Yeah. So if you think of like your your phone playing music and a stereo playing music. This is a much richer sound, but that's really more. All right, so I bought this to get out of phone calls. So uh, on the phone, grandma's calling you or telemarketer or somebody you don't want to talk to anymore and you don't want to be rude and hang up on them. You can just flip this. Hey, sorry, grandma, there's thunder and lightning. I really can't hear you. Bye-bye. And you hang up and then grandma doesn't know any better. So. At uh, STEM night a few years ago, we had these available for kids to make, and it's called a clucking cup. So we have a cup. So we have a diaphragm here, and then we have the string hanging down from here, and we're going to flick that, and we're going to take a li listen. Ready? You hear that? No, I don't either. I don't hear anything. Yeah, there's nothing there. It, it, I know it works, though. It will. Okay. But not with the string. It worked with the spring, but the string needs a technique called the stick and slide. So if you made one of these at STEM night, you know that we need to make this string sticky. So I am putting some water on the string and I have to squeeze and then slide. So this is very similar to the noises you make like on the basketball court or in your gym where you can go in and just kind of squeak your feet across the, the floor. So mm -hmm. your feet stick and then you slide them and it makes that squeaking sound. So here is the stick and slide on a piece of yarn. Sounds like a clucking chicken. It really sounds like a chicken. And you can just go down. And it works better when it's wet, so it's a little stickier. Okay, so I can use an aluminum rod to show you the same thing. Now, this is the most annoying yeah. sound I think I've ever heard. Be prepared. I'm going to step back. Yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't sound as bad over video as it does live. Here in the studio, so it's terrible. We're hoping to have a whole new sound um, exhibit when we have our STEM nights, so be sure to look for these rods and see if you can make this sound when you come. Okay, before I get to that, though, let's go back and talk about the different kinds of waves. So when I tap this rod, I can make both the transverse and that longitudinal wave. Listen for the two different sounds. Mm. Okay, when I hit it, you can hear that low sound. I heard a second sound. Right, right away. And then listen for the high sound. Right at the end there. It's still going. Yeah. Okay, so if I press the end of it, it stops. 
So the transverse wave is the wave you hear right at the beginning. But that longitudinal wave or compression wave is the one that comes out the end of this rod. And I stop it by pressing the end. Okay? So you can hear those two waves. Now if I tap the end of the rod, I can hear that high pitched sound much better and then stop it. Sometimes if I hit it hard enough, I can, I can get a puff of the rosin on my finger, but I'll show you that in a second. Okay, but this isn't the stick and slide, right? No, okay. not yet. So let's do the stick and slide. So what I need to do is I need to make my fingers sticky. So what I'm using here is violin rosin. Now it's <clears> usually <throat> a hard, solid block of rosin, but I took it out and hit it with a hammer so I have this powder. And this is what violin players use on their bow to make it sticky so they can make the sound they're playing on their violin. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stick and slide my fingers on this rod. All right, I'm ready. here we go. Oh. Oh. And then if oh. I stop it, I can see a little oh. puff of the rosin come off of my finger because the end of this rod is vibrating. And so when I touch it, the vibrations cause that, that puff. So oh. I didn't make it as loud that time. Okay, so that was this aluminum rod. What about if I make or use the same technique on this shorter rod? The diameters are the same. Let's see if we can see that a little better. So the diameters are the same, but this one is shorter. They're both made out of the same material. They're both aluminum. So Dr. Gillette, let's make a prediction. And you guys can make a prediction too. Okay. Will so this be a higher note or a lower note? Higher frequency or lower frequency? Now you've asked me that 20 times because we've done this assembly 20 times. This yep. is the last one. Yep. And I'm going to get it right one time, but I'm going to say because it's a shorter rod, it's a lower note. All right. So Agree or disagree? Here we go. Oh, jeez. Okay. That was a higher note, wasn't it? Let's see. There we go. That was good. Oh, that was, that's higher. Oh. It is higher. Oh, oh. Okay, so I have one more rod to try. This one is made of brass and the diameter is much smaller. So it's a much thinner rod, but the heights are the same. So different material, different diameter, same height, same I'm gonna length. say so, narrower, so it's a lower note. Okay. I think that's lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see if I can. It's not working. Oh, there it went. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> that's a good, that's almost pleasant. That's as pleasant note. as a terrible sound can be. So the brass and the diameter change. And yeah. if you notice, the note itself sounded different, not just higher or lower, but it did sound different. Okay, so I have an instrument that we put together. I did not invent it myself, but we put it together just for today's assembly. So give me a second. And it's one. Of, it's a stick and slide, isn't it? Yes, it is another example of okay, stick and slide. I am ready. Okay, so with the understanding of frequency and stick and slide, I can make music. So here is my musical instrument. What? You don't think this home improvement tool can create sound? Hey, I can play music on this crosscut saw that we got at the hardware store. Okay. So this is where the violin bow will come into use. So I think I sat on my rosin. <laughs> here we go. So here is the rosin before I took a hammer to it. So it's just this block of rosin and I take my bow and I slide it on the rosin to make these horse hairs here really sticky. All right, so, whew, that could be dangerous. <laughs> Okay, so I need to bend this saw blade in such a way that the vibrations will happen. 
So if I just do it straight, there's no sound or no, no real music. But if I put an S curve in it, and then I can change the curve to change that note, to change that frequency. Okay, so remember all you need to do is create a vibration that will travel in waves through the air to your ear. So with enough practice, I could play Mozart. You don't believe me? That's okay. Look up musical saws on YouTube. You'll be amazed at the music some people are able to create on this instrument. All right, yep. so let's go to our next one, Dr. G. Okay. Okay, so let's look at another example of frequency. So here we have these pipes called boom whackers. Okay, so they're all the same diameter and, well, not and, they're the same diameter, same material, in, but different lengths. Yeah. So we have, oop, as they go flying, we have three different lengths of this. So all the red colored tubes are the same note. So let's look at our longest and our shortest. We're gonna make another prediction. No pressure, Dr. Okay. D. All right, I, so which one will make the lower note? So it'll have the lower frequency. I'm gonna go with the shorter one has the lower note. Okay. So he thinks that the... I was right one time, I remember, but I don't remember what I guessed. Okay, so how do we find out? We gotta test it. Okay, so you go first. Okay. That was. This was lower. Yeah, that was lower. So, so this too... I was wrong. ...has the lowest frequency. It's a prediction. Oh, okay. It's okay. All right, so we can go through these tubes from longest to shortest and play what they call a C major scale. Yeah. All right, so they're not in order. That way we could go back and forth and play the scale. Okay, here we go. All right, hey. so remember when I said that there were three different lengths for this red color, the C note, okay? So if you've watched Sound of Music, you know the Do Re Mi song. So each one of these is one of those. The last sound in this scale, which is this one, and it's, we did a double scale, is this, the, um, it's a higher octave. So here is one note. The next one is one octave up and this one is two octaves up. And so what that means is the higher note moves at twice the frequency as the one below it. So this has a frequency and it's moving twice as fast as this frequency. And then this frequency is moving twice as fast as this frequency. So same note, but a higher, a higher pitch is moving twice as fast. So what I can do is if you've been here at the STEM nights, you know that we have our PVC xylophone with music. So we thought we would do kind of a name that tune kind of thing. So as Dr. Gillette is finishing up setting up the next activity, I am going to play a song for you. Okay, are we ready? Yep. Here we go. Name that tune. is the name of that song. All right, Dr. Gillette, what do you think? Baba Black Sheep. No. No, well, yes, no. It would be different, same notes, but uh, quarter notes, oh, eighth notes, yeah. that kind of thing. So it was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or the ABC song. All right, cool. Now, if you don't have saws or plastic tubes, can you still make sound? Of course. Yeah, of course you can. So we're gonna take these bottles 
We've got these empty bottles here. And we're going to fill these bottles with different amounts of water and tap them to see what kind of sound we make. Okay. So let's fill. we got this one filled just a little bit, a little bit more. I'm going to add some water here. Do a little bit more. Is that a more? A little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. And then we'll do more in this one. And we'll notice if there's a difference in the sound. That's good. Um, oh, no, maybe a little bit more. There you go. All right. So if I tap them, that sounds almost high pitched. Ooh, that sounded higher. Higher. Sounded higher still. Let's so try that again. Out of tune, but I think they were. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Right. That's pretty cool. So, um, does the amount of water make this change? It does, but let's talk about what's vibrating first. Okay. So what is vibrating when you tap the glass? Well, the glass. I actually see the glass move a little bit. Yeah, the glass is vibrating. Yeah. So what is the water doing to the vibration? It's stopping the vibration. Or slowing it down. Slowing it down. They okay. call it dampening. Dampening. So it's dampening. So the water slows down the vibration. So the more water the slower the frequency. So, okay, high frequency, higher frequency? Okay, so start with this one, the okay. least amount of water. Okay. So what do you notice with those notes? Are they going up or are they going they down? They went down and got lower. Right, so okay. the water, the more water in the bottle, the slower the frequency of that wave. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right, so what we have here, we actually have a musical scale already set up. Let me get these out. And if you were a fan, Sound of Music fan, you probably already know this song. So, Do, and we got Re, Mi, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Okay. So, we should hear the scale from Sound of Music. All right, ready? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Ti, Do, Do, Do. Yeah. It's Doesn't, not quite doing it. So we don't see a difference between the T, oops, where we go, there we go, and the last Do. So what do you think we need to do to get it? So play it again. Okay. Doesn't sound any no. different. So think about what you would need to do to get that note just a bit higher. I think we need more right. glass. Possible. Yeah. We okay. might need liquid, we might need glass. We're gonna let them think about it based on what they know. All right. Okay, so, so we're going to try easy. something else. Have you ever blown across the top of the bottle? If so, have you ever wondered how exactly that note is made? This is just like when I was learning how to play my flute in elementary school. I need to blow over the top of the bottle just right. So my beginning band teacher told me you have to say the letter M and then kind of tuck in your cheeks there at the end of your lips and then blow over the top as if you're inflating a balloon. Very good. So if you if you blow real softly, it just won't be the same sound. Okay. So some musical instruments use the vibrating strings. Some blow over an opening. Some use a wooden reed for the vibration. So all musical instruments do something a little bit different. Okay. So if we change the amount of water, does that change the note? So let's try it. like it was getting it, it went down lower. so the note was getting lower yeah. so the frequency was slowing down 
But remember when we tapped it, it went up. It went up. So this is the difference between the glass vibrating and the air vibrating. Okay. So in this one, we have more no, more water. So this is less air, that one is more air, right? So yeah. blow on that one. Ah. So okay, so this is a low note. But this is a high note. Yeah, but this, you're talking about two different vibrations. Yeah, yeah. So here you have more air, so mm -hmm. it's a lower frequency. Mm -hmm. Things are moving slower, and here when you blow over it, things are moving faster, so it causes that higher yeah. frequency. Alrighty. Awesome. The sound is so cool. I think I just now, for the first time, figured that out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we brought a genie out to start our show off, and we wanted to show you how we did that. So the genie's hidden in the pipe. There's really no genie in the pipe. What there is actually, if you look very carefully, there's a metal screen. It looks something like this. So we shoved that in there, and it would look something like this if we could heat up this clear tube. We can't, it'll melt. But you can see we stuffed this screen right in there. So what we did to get the genie to sing, we heated it. Oh, I can't hold that with my bare hands. We heated this up. And you can see the screen. See how it gets, yeah, see how it gets red hot there? We'll put it in front of you because it kind of blends Oh yeah, it. can you see how hot, the, oh there we go. Yeah, that red hot. So what that does is that red hot uh, screen causes the air to rise. And so it creates a vacuum down here and it pushes the air through. And as that air is going through the pipe, it's making that singing sound. So you can hear, now with the real genie, heat this up. And we use really thick pipes so I can hold this with my, with my bare hand. So it does warm up, but not really enough to, uh, to burn my hands here. So I do this, do this, do this. Now remember, the air has to rise to make the sound. So there's the genie, but now if I turn it sideways, see it stopped. It now I turn it up through. again. There, turn it sideways to stop. So I tricked you guys. I pretended to pour the sound out by turning it sideways. And then I poured it back in, and the sound stopped. Oh, you can also stop it that way, too. Yeah, you stop the air rising by putting a, your hand over the top. But if, cool. we, if we make that gag last too long, all of a sudden there's no more sound. And... Yeah, we have to go through that one quickly. Okay. okay, hoses, hoses. All right, so this is something you can do at home. I took a garden hose, cut it, and I'm going to swing it because I want air to travel through the hose. So let's see. Here we go. Do you hear anything? I kind of hear it moving through the air. So, I hear a hum. Yeah, there's a hum there. If you remember back a couple years ago, we did an assembly about Bernoulli's principle. Uh, Bernoulli's principle, fast moving air causes low pressure, which makes a vacuum, and you can do all sorts of things with ping pong balls. So as I swing this, right here at the end, this is fast moving air, right around in here. And that causes low pressure to hit right here, and that pulls air up through the hose. But now if I use a different kind of hose, now this one has some ridges in it. And if I spin this, remember, low pressure, vacuum, pulls the air up through the hose. But now I get a note, the faster I go, the faster it goes, or the, sorry, the higher the note. And these ridges are the key. You see the air particles skip along the edges here, the, the ridges, and makes that musical note. All right, so what happens when the air is no longer there, when we use up the air. So if there's no air to go through, we want to know what's going to happen to the sound. So what yeah. I did is I took a trash bag and taped it to the bottom of my tube. And we are going to spin it around and see what happens when the air in the bag is all pulled up and out of the hose. Okay. All right, so what do you think is going to happen? No air, I'm gonna say no sound. Okay, all right, so let's test it. Watch carefully. You can hear it. And now I can't. See, the bag is empty. So when the bag is empty, there is no more sound. So there's no more molecules to go tumbling through the hose and bounce off all of these ridges. And so there's no sound to be heard. And that's a simple example of why there's no sound in space. So 
So no sound. No air, no sound. Yeah. Okay. So while Dr. Gillette is going outside to set up the last activity, um, I want to issue you a challenge. Okay, so we want you to think about all of the things you learned today about sound, especially that different sound waves create different sounds. Think about the amplitude, so that volume, and then the frequency for the high pitch versus the low pitch. Okay, so we want you to design a musical instrument that plays three different sounds. So design and build that instrument. You don't need any fancy materials. Okay? If you know me, you know how I like to raid the recycle bin at my house, so you can use simple things. Tissue box, paper towel tube, I have a spoon, a wooden stir stick, I have string, I have rubber bands, rubber bands are good. I have different size cups and things inside. Okay, so think about what you could use and design and build a musical instrument that can play three different notes. So we sent a video to your teachers, kind of explain the engineering design process that we want you to follow as you're going through this. Um, and we explain more in the video. So be sure to ask your teachers for that video. Be creative. Bonus points if you can play a song on the instrument that you designed. So we cannot wait to see what you come up with. All right, so let's go out to... All right, so we're out in our courtyard, lots of room, no one's going to get hit. Got my hose, garden hose, spin that around. Not much, no, just moving through the air. If I take my corrugated hose, spin that, I get a note. Now I go faster, get a higher note. So I wondered, what if I use a bigger pipe? So I found this, the hardware store. It's not only is the diameter greater, but it's also longer. So if I spin this around, I should get a note. Oh, I hear that. Now let's see if I can go faster. Oh, wow. That was a lot of work, and we didn't get much air through the hose. We have an idea, though. Let's go on a field trip. Come on, let's go. So we've got that big, long, corrugated hose in the, in the car now. I've got one end right back here that I'm going to hold. This is where the sound is going to come out. Mrs. Gillette's going to roll down her window, and she's going to stick it out the uh, uh, window, and we're going to see how it goes. Now, the science behind this is, as you saw in the courtyard, the uh, air goes through the pipe, and it skips along those ridges. I can start to hear something. <laughs> and uh, it makes the noise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try out different speeds and we're gonna see how it goes. So right now we're just gonna see if it works and we're doing about 35 miles an hour. All right, All right rolling down go. the window, here we go. Kick it up to 45 miles an hour, see if it gets louder. That's 45. Yeah, I don't Did you hear a difference? The pitch just went up. The pitch went up, yeah. Alright, so let's try 55. Alright, so now I'm going to speed up again and we're going to see how it goes. I'm just going to keep accelerating. There you go. It starts nice and low. Yeah, it does. It goes low and then it goes high. Now, is that the pitch? That is the pitch. It's 
so volume isn't changing. it comes in all right so I'm gonna flip flip around we're gonna try that again Jeez. all right so here we're doing we're going real slow oh I can hear that that's See that that's low. 10 miles an hour that's low let's try it again let's go up to 20 I don't hear anything do you not at 20 a little bit it's a little bit it's not very loud okay so there we go 30 Okay, so we start to hear it at 30. So the air is blowing through there really fast. Now I wonder when we were doing it in the courtyard swinging around, I wonder how fast it was going through there. Now we're oh, yeah. at 40. Well, and this is definitely a different sound, but I'm wondering because it's windy today, if that, that has an effect. how much air is actually going into the tube. Yeah, now we're doing 50. And if it's if it's going directly in or sideways, I wonder if that makes a difference. Well, I'm hearing something tell. really high. Yeah, you hear that harmonics now that we're going faster, and it's yeah, more I, well, than that is loud. More than a couple slow minutes. down a little bit so you can hear us. So yeah, I can hear at least two notes in there. And remember, we have that wavelength going. So the faster the wavelength, the higher the pitch. Huh. So should we speed up again and see? Yeah. What that top top now, note, that high pitch sounds. What happens if you? Uh oh. Nope, you're 
comes. Doesn't look too happy. Yeah, uh-oh. Hopefully he liked science as a kid. Hello, officer. Hello. Sorry, we were we were doing science. Uh, we were trying to get the hose. We were see the, as the air goes through and the, the ridges, it, it vibrates. Okay, okay. And, well, I'm also bizarre. Like, I feel like this police is really stopping. Going too fast. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. All right. Your driver license, proof of insurance, your vehicle registration. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here you go. Okay. So what are you doing signs for? Uh, we were doing it for an assembly about sound. So if you stick this out the car and the air okay. runs through it, it creates a really loud vibrating sound. And we got excited and we went a little too fast. I apologize, so sorry. Okay, I'll be right back, okay? Okay, oh. Uh-oh, he's gonna call it in. Oh, what are we gonna do? Oh, maybe, maybe because we're science teachers. It'll get us off. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully, hopefully he likes science when he was a kid and he'll feel sorry for you. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he wasn't one of my students and he, and <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be terrible if, if he got in trouble in my class a lot? Oh, no. All right, sir, here's your driver license back. Okay. You know, science doesn't give permission to be speeding or going on unsafe speeds here in the okay, streets, okay? So with that, I'm going to give you a citation for, uh, for speeding. Okay, okay, all right, okay. And Thank you, sir. Your here in the bottom. Okay. If I was here in court. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Thank Ready? you. Here's your coffee. All right. Okay. Be careful. Be mindful of the speed. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Have a good one. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We learned a valuable lesson. Uh, speeding. No. 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 Not even for science. You know. And I wonder. I wonder if Albert Einstein ever got a speeding ticket for going faster than the speed of light. What do you think? Yeah. I don't uh, know. I like yeah. That. Okay. Well, now I guess it's back to the assembly. Now we'll see you back at the uh, uh, AVCI. All right. Thanks, guys. What an adventure. It's very expensive. It, it was. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, boys and girls. We hope you had as much fun as we did. And we're really looking forward to seeing your musical instrument designs. And we have some really exciting news for next year. So stay tuned. And we will see you again soon. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's the best one we've done yet. I think um, so. Yeah, we told a good story. All right, so for those of you still hanging out with us, uh, you can see we have a studio here. Yeah, the, the first assembly we did with you guys, we didn't have quite this setup. We had shop lights that were terrible. You are definitely our guinea pigs. Yeah, we, we've got actual studio lights that we borrowed from the high school, better cameras that we borrowed. Uh, we have some monitors set up. We have green screens over here. Uh, you can see those with the boom whacker and the musical saw. But the most exciting part of this yeah. is that we get to use this equipment oh. at our STEM night. So we are going to have some type of broadcast center where you can come in and be in front of a green screen and do a weather forecast or broadcast or anything like that so yeah maybe even have the oh yeah this is this is our, our i'm so proud of this oh yeah i'll have to fix that um this is just it's almost like a a, a tablecloth it's just the cheapest thing and it looks so good on camera i can tell you in person it looks terrible but on camera it just looks awful we have a little fake light over here and we had so much oh we put a camera on the ceiling and yeah you don't want to look at the ceiling because there's lots of bird marks up there uh yeah, that the last assembly. yeah that was it <laughs> Hey, so we had so much fun. Thanks for joining us. We've done 40 assemblies this year. This is our last assembly. So have a good uh, rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you around, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good job.